for one dimensional collisions, let's talk about two objects, one and object two, moving with velocity v1 and another object v2, moving with velocity v2. Let's say they're moving on the ground. Now, I'd like to introduce the concept of relative velocity, a concept that we experience all the time in our lives, but let's see what it actually means. So v relative, I'm going to define this to be the velocity of 1 minus the velocity of 2. Now, because of this minus sign, that seems a little bit about abstract, but one typical example where we see this all the time is for people traveling on highways. You might have two cars, one car overtaking the other car. But if you're sitting in car one, it looks like car two is going quite slow. So let's just take a typical highway example. So you might have V1, and we'll give this some speed, so we'll make it 60 miles per hour, and we'll just call this a one-dimensional problem, I hat. And V2, notice we're not speeding on a highway, V2 is going at 50 miles per hour, I hat, very slow. And the relative velocity, V1 minus V2, so that's what we're calling V relative, that's 60 miles per hour, minus 50 miles per hour, I hat, and that's just 10 miles per hour, and that's what people experience when one car is approaching another car. Um, if you're in car two, car one seems like it's coming at you at 10 miles per hour. This is what we mean by relative velocity. There's another important example, um, so that's example one. The other important example to look at, example two, is when two objects are moving in opposite directions. So let's just write here a, um, let's write them in terms of components this time. So we have v1, x1, and we have v2, and let's make v1, x positive. So object one is moving in that direction. And let's write this one as v2, x. We don't have to call this initial. We'll just call it v2, x, i hat. And here, v2, x, is equal to minus v1x. So its component is negative. And even though we drew an arrow in this picture, the picture is still fine because if the component is negative, it means it's moving in the opposite direction. The key arrow is the unit vector when we're writing components. And now v relative in this case is v1x i hat minus v2x i hat. That's v1x i hat minus minus, so there's another v1, x, i hat. So the relative speed velocity in this case has a component that's twice the speed of v1. If two objects are moving together at the same speed, the relative velocity, the way we've defined it, has twice the magnitude of either velocity. And this is an important example to consider in collisions. Now, this relative velocity concept we'll see will add a new way of thinking about elastic collisions with no external forces in one dimension. So we're going to return to our one-dimensional elastic collision with no external forces. So we have object one moving with velocity v1 initial, and object two, maybe it's moving this way with v2 initial i hat, again on a frictionless surface and we'll call that our initial state. And here you can imagine we're going to use a ground reference frame, so both objects are moving, and our final state has object one. Well, we don't know, again, which way it's going. We can just say it bounced back, and object two also bounced back, but the goal of our problem, of course, is to determine these vectors. And by knowing the vectors, we know which way they go. Now, because energy and momentum are constant, let's write down our two equations. And I'm going to write them down again in terms of components. So we have 1 half m1 v1 x initial squared plus 1 half m2 v2 x initial squared equals 1 half m1 v one x final squared plus one half m two v two x 
final squared. Now, we're going to do some algebraic manipulations here. So the first thing I'm going to do is just eliminate these halves because it's not necessary and I don't want to rewrite this equation. And this is our, our fact that our energy is constant. And now our condition that momentum is constant. Um, we'll write this now. I'm going to leave a little space here intentionally. And our condition that momentum is constant is m1 vx initial plus m2 v2x initial equals m1 v1x final plus m2 v2x final. Now, this energy equation can be factored in by bringing all the m1 terms to one side and the m2 terms to the other side. So when I write that, I'll need a little room. I have m1 v1x initial squared minus v1x final squared. And that's equal to m2 v2x final squared minus v2x initial squared. So I've just brought those terms over to the other side. Now, likewise, I'll do the same thing down here. I have m1 v1x initial minus v1x final. And that's equal to m2 v2x final minus v2x initial. Now, here comes the algebraic trick in which I'm going to linearize these systems. This is a squared minus b squared, which factors into a plus b times a minus b. So let's give ourselves a little room. m1, v1x initial plus, let's put the minus sign first, minus v1x final times v1x initial plus v1x final. Factored that term, we have the same factoring on the other side. Um, so it's just identical v2x final minus v2x initial times v2x final plus v2x initial. Now, let's call this equation 1a and our momentum factored as 2a. Now, if you notice, the momentum piece is appearing exactly there and exactly here. So when I divide 1a by 2a, and I'll just symbolically represent that, then these two pieces cancel, and that leads to just this term equal to that term. And the significance, as you'll see when I write it out, 1f x 1x final equals v2x final plus v2x initial. I've solved the quad, I've eliminated the square terms, linearize the system. Now, I still want to write this equation in another way. Another important point to notice is that this equation is independent of mass. Now, what I want to do is write this in terms of those concepts of relative velocity we had. Remember, just to motivate this, v relative, by definition, was v1 minus v2. So let's write this in terms of the initial and the final. So in order to do that, we have to bring this initial term over to here and this final term over to there. And so this equation, which we'll give it a number 3, and now we'll modify that by calling it 3a. We have v1x initial minus v2x initial. Now notice the sign. I'm going to want to keep the order of 1 and 2, so I have to put a minus sign v1 x final minus v2 x final. And when written this way, this is, the this is the initial component of the relative velocity. And in there is the final component of relative velocity. So by combining these two equations, I have this remarkable result that re v relative initial is minus v relative final. And this condition is a very powerful tool for simply analyzing one-dimensional elastic and elastic collisions. I'd like to even give this a name. I'd like to call it the energy-momentum 
equation. Now, there's a lot of significant things about this, so let's just think about it for a moment. We have that V relative initial in magnitude is equal to V relative final. And so right away, this gives us some insight into any collision. We can see whether a collision, if we know what the relative initial velocity is, we know that the final relative velocity has the same magnitude but simply switches direction. And that's a powerful tool in which to analyze collisions without doing a lot of algebra. Let's consider a gravitational slingshot. What is that? Well, once in a while, people like to send spacecrafts out into the solar system, particularly the outer solar system, to explore what's going on there. And because we can't, on Earth, give enough speed to these little spacecrafts, we need the big planets around us to help us a little. And so we can consider a, a large planet like Jupiter or Saturn. Here we have Saturn. And uh, if we have a little spacecraft and we make it fly by close, then what actually happens is it will, due to the gravitational attraction of Saturn, acquire a kick in velocity, and that is a gravitational slingshot. So let's look at that. So our little spacecraft comes in with an initial velocity. And um, Saturn, of course, also has a velocity. And uh, once it has passed, our little spacecraft will have a final velocity. And uh, in order to calculate what this final velocity is going to be, what the increase in speed is going to be, we need the concept of relative velocity. And uh, for that, we need to first consider uh, some initial state. So we have the relative velocity initially, and that is the difference between the, those two velocities, between the spacecraft and Saturn. And what becomes very important here is that we look at the coordinate system and keep that in mind, otherwise we're going to get a few sign errors. So the, uh, velo the initial velocity of the spacecraft goes in the i-hat direction. And the velocity, the, the relative velocity is, of course, the difference, so minus the velocity of Saturn, but that one goes in the minus i hat direction. And then we have the final state, so v final relative. And here we have the final velocity of the spacecraft now going in the minus i hat direction, minus the velocity of Saturn that also goes in the minus i hat direction. Now there's one thing that we need to consider, which is this velocity of Saturn. This one actually is, of course, here the initial velocity of Saturn, and this one is the final one. But because the mass of Saturn is so much larger than uh, the mass of the spacecraft, we can actually set the initial velocity of Saturn to the final velocity of Saturn. So we can turn this, we can take this away here again and just uh, consider one uh, velocity of Saturn. Okay, good. There's one more thing that we need in order to solve this, because we need to know how the, velo the relative velocities are actually related. And the um, energy-momentum law uh, helps us there, uh, because that gives us that the initial relative velocity equals minus the final relative velocity. Okay, so we can plug that in now. What do we have here for the initial velocity? We have vi uh, minus twice gives us a plus the Saturn velocity, and that equals um, minus minus gives us a plus the final velocity of the spacecraft. And then we have three minuses here, so that gives us a minus um, the Saturn velocity. And we know from the, um, the problem that the initial velocity here of the spacecraft was actually given at three Saturn velocities. So we can tally this up now. We have oh, three. We have three plus one is four. And we'll put this over on the other side. That gives us five. Five Saturn velocities equals our final velocity. So 
that's uh, quite a good gain, I would say. And it nicely illustrates why big planets like Jupiter and Saturn are really, really helpful for the exploration of the solar system. And that is actually how uh, the U New Horizons mission made it out to Pluto, all the way out there.